Firing in the rain. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle-Aged Gamer and this is the KWA Mega Arms CQBR GBBR AR15. And boy that was a mouthful, but hey, quality always is. Now, before we get into this awesome rifle, I want to say a huge shout out once again to my good friend Jay for donating this rifle for a review to the channel. And oh my God, you know, I'm really grateful to him for this. It's been a great opportunity to see the KWA side of things and to be able to put KWA internals and shooting performance on the camera as a review for you guys and compare it towards things like the VFC that you see me shoot a lot. Now, with that being said, let's introduce ourselves to the Mega Rams. So what is it? As you can see, it is an AR-15, but Mega Rams itself was set around 1984, um, started development in AR-15s and trying to search for the next big thing or shift in the AR-15 marketplace. And around that time, the military was looking for new type of handguards, new bits and bobs, and they decided to go from a milled receiver to a billet receiver, and hence the billet style you see here. Um, key mod was coming in, so they tried putting key mod on their things, though we all know who won that one, you know, with Mlot being the way, cue the Mandalorian. Um, but with that being said, you know, they tried a lot of things, and, and around the early 2000s, they came up with a brand new idea um, which was to extend the upper receiver um, to shroud round the barrel nut, but to do so it means they would need a proprietary barrel nut for them, and that way the handguard fits to the upper receiver rather than the barrel nut, and the barrel nut just retains the barrel, meaning you don't get any flex or wobble under sustained fire or hot, you know, long day, end of the day, you, you start seeing zero shift. Now you still see that in like the Mark 18, but it's acceptable because the Mark 18 uses a plate that goes behind the barrel nut between the upper receiver and the actual barrel nut and is secured and then the whole handguard secures to that plate but you're still getting shift if you post up against a tree and your gun's really hot you could see a few mil shift it's completely theoretical at this point because the reality is no one's really got that far in an engagement to actually test that theory out even after all these wars that we've been having but it was a problem the military wanted solving. Mega Arms tried it, it didn't work. So they tried the idea for the three gun, you know, professional shooting market saying, hey, this is accurate, etc." But again, the problem with AR-15s are there's millions of companies out there making AR-15s. And even though yours is a cool idea, like Mega Arms was a really good idea what they did, it wasn't enough to take off. And so um, I went bankrupt in the mid 2000s, around about 2014 to 2016, I hear. And I believe Zev Industries now owns that brand and are currently servicing the weapons, but not got any plans to, how would say, bring it back. But KWA did, and they kind of like brought this rifle five years ago to the market and said, hey, here is a high end brand new AR-15, a unique design competing out there with all the M4A1 mock-ups that people were getting, you know, and they were like, no, here's a really cool one. So with that being said, I have a very long intro. Let's dive in and start looking at this awesome rifle. We'll start at the rear, work our way forward. Okay, so with that saying, let's get into it. Okay, so at the rear of the rifle, you can see that we have the PTS EPS stock. Now the EPS stock was designed to fit on both gas blowback rifles and electronic rifles, as you say, or AEGs. And so therefore one stock to do it all. And that's kind of cool because it has a massive compartment in there that is squared off. So you can fit the proper, how would say, candy bar batteries in the back and run a M1 if you had the AEG version. Um, but with the gas blowback, you've got plenty of room. You can fit in some cleaning kit, some snacks for the field, or any spare little bits and bobs. It works. Just pinching these two together should pop off the rear, as you can see. And you have quite a substantial cavernous 
opening there to fit whatever you want. You do get your standard sling point here and QD points here. The stock is adjustable right here. Now, to match the stock, you do get the EPS pistol grip from PTS. And of course, that's, you know, KWA wouldn't put crap furniture on a cool gun at the end of the day. And they really did give you nice. It's a lovely pistol grip um, that feels more comfortable. It's alongside the BCM style of grips these days, which is awesome. Okay, so from the grip, as you can see going up, you have your fire control, which is non ambidextrous but is very smooth. There's this nice little click, very soft, but it's there, and it does hold it positively. You do get, like say, a standard T handle. It's just a mil spec standard with a steel latch here. The only downside to steel latches is, as you can see there, it does scratch your paint, and if the latch is highly sprung, which this one isn't, it's a nice soft spring, it would eat into the receiver. Just like on real steel, you do see that a lot. That's why a lot of people go with the aluminum or aluminum, depending on what you want to say. Potatoes, potatoes, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, it's a standard charging handle. It will fit any AR-15 charging handle. So if you have a, pre a preferred Raptor handle or something like that, it'll fit in this gun. You do get this cool Mega Arms blade style trigger, which is really nice looking with the lightning cuts on it. It's a nice flat face there. And like I say, it's a lovely trigger. The actual trigger guard is molded into the actual receiver and is widened so that yes, you can fit your winter gloves or your airsoft gloves with all your protection, as we would say, quite well. You get your non ambidextrous bolt hold open release here. And as you can see, you get your billet style, I would say magwell. It has been flared and it's really good. Now with this gun, you do get the following magazines, which if I pull that out without breaking the gun, you get your PTS EPM mags, which are designed for, I would say this cool rifle, but they are bloody heavy. These weighted mags are roughly about twice the weight of a VFC Stanag HK mag for the 416, which is huge and full steel. Yeah, these are twice as heavier than that. They're really heavy mags, but they do hold 40 rounds, so it does go into its favor. And these being KWA, you have the KWA fit and feed. Let's see if we can get it, there we go. And of course, you've got the dual stack single feed at the top. Now, this wide open here can lead to some double feed. I've noticed that with the KWA guns. I've had a few now, and they've all had that one where you get the double feed through, just as a simple thing, because the opening here is so wide. Whereas a normal one would just have a, a circular hole here at the front when it goes to a single feed. So it's kind of cool, but just a, something to be aware of. Now, as for markings, you can see here, you've got the Mega Arms. It's a multi-cal. They originally made this in the real steel in 5.56223 Remington. Um, if I remember rightly, 7.62 by 39 was done and they did just start to develop the 7.62 by 51, but it did actually get discontinued along with everything else at that time. Although I've seen some people make one up, if you know what I mean. As you can see, you've got your model number here, which is the GTR3H, and you've got the Mega for Mega Arms stamped in at the top. So lovely details on this. It does look nice. Now, let's spin this around and show you the other side before we get a look at the handguard. Okay, dokie. So, spinning this awesome gun around, get it so it doesn't fall over. You have your actual forward assist, and this one actually works. It does actually work. You have your magazine release here. You, as I said, it's not ambidextrous, so you don't get the ambidextrous fire control. But guess what, guys? KWA make them. You can fit one, no problem. Two minutes worth of work, and you'll have an ambidextrous one there, if you wish. They've replicated the shell deflector there, which is cool. You have your steel dust cover here, which will... Pull that back, reveals your nice silver bolt. And you've got, as you can see here, the official PTS logo. And as it says, for training simulation only. And you have a unique serial number here. Now, one thing I will show you is here in the handguard. This is what I was talking about. You have six screws on either side, so 12 screws in total. 
It's a bit of a ball eight to take off. But this whole receiver extends to about here. Now underneath here is just a little shroud that goes round the outside of the barrel nut. So this handguard is not at any way attached to the actual barrel itself. Meaning this barrel is a true free float design, which is awesome. And it was a really cool idea. It's just a shame it didn't take off in the way that they hoped. And like I say, that one's cool. The only downside is you have a proprietary barrel nut. Now to remove that, you need to buy a tool and they are very hard to come by or you have to make one yourself. And, you know, that can be done if you know you're better way of, with engineering and that, or I'm sure someone can make one for you. But that's just something to be aware of. Now, with that, they did go M-Lock. And even though it's M-Lock, if you fit a lighter laser on the side, because of the unique design of the handguard, it's not going to shift zero at all. If anything shifts, it's just the lo the looseness of the actual M-Lock design, which can cause it to shift. Um, but if you do fit it on the top, it's going to be perfect. And as you can see, the complete monolithic rail going right across with all sections fully usable, which is awesome. Now at the end, you get a standard birdcage um, with this, an A2 one. It's a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread, standard a Jose GBBR spec. I fitted my little tracer unit for the purposes of this review and it kind of looks cool on all ARs. They just look better with a suppressor on. And that's about it. Now, one thing I will say is missing on this gun, um, which was missing as my friend bought it pre-owned, was the traditional M for what they call it turret style rear sight. So you had a little turret up here with the old A2 sort of adjustment controls on it that was on there and you had a front post which was a half a post that had attached to a picatinny rather than the barrel so you had that up front those went missing so the previous owner had removed them and have gone the way of the dodo to be honest everyone would have removed them anyway because they look horrendous but as kwa had to throw some sights on they decided to throw them god knows why but it is what it is so with that being said Let's take this outside. A word of note, it is raining, but that's cool because it means that Mother Nature wants to really hard test this rifle and see what she's like. Okay guys, I'm using 0.25 gram BBs and green gas. Okay, that's awesome. Bit of a drop, but that's awesome. Okay, let's step it back and let's see what she does at 10 meters. That's not bad with one miss, that's kind of a flyer. My hand's there, it's about two inches by three and a half inches. That's a decent grouping. Okay, let's shoot the test to the start and let's see. Whatever's left in the mag, we'll fire at it until all plates are gone. Let's take it back to about 10 meters again. cleared it and we still have rounds in the gun that is awesome well guys that was wet and eventful one thing i did notice is with these magazines after around about 25 30 shots the cooldown on this being a heavy steel internals it just transfers so much cooldown that it won't always cycle the bolt to the end or you'll run out of gas quite quickly they're not very efficient on their uh, magazine so i would suggest if you do buy these don't load them to 40 load them to 30 and cut off at that point and you'll be doing fine um they're not as efficient in their how to say design as the vfc mags were or even ghk at this point but 
it's not bad. Like I say, this gun is five years old, but this is compatible. One thing I do will tell you is this being LM4 internals, KWA standard, it's compatible with all LM4 magazines. So if you've got better magazines out there, the Stanags or other type of polymer mags, use them. I would highly suggest you do. Now, there are a few other things I've noticed about shooting this rifle, which we'll go over in a moment. Let's do a quick test and see what's steel on the outside, shall we? So the fire selector is not, it's aluminum. The bolt pin, or should I say the um, receiver pins are. The actual bolt release is, but the magazine release isn't. Castle nut is, as I said, whoop, here you go. That one's steel for the latch, but it's a soft spring, so it's not going to damage. There is no rear, I would say, sling mount here because you've got the, uh, what they call it, the Q QD mount on the stock, so you're not going to need one for that. So let's see. <sighs> Flipping it over. Your trigger is aluminum. Like I say, that's all aluminum. Aluminum steel and that's pretty much it so there's steel where it needs to be just not where you would think it would be so with that being said let's crack this open and see what's inside shall we pull the pin now one thing i've noticed ugh. right let's break this open as you can see who does this buffer come on guys who put it in the comments who copied who KWA have basically come to the party and said, hey, I like Tokyo Marui's buffer. Let's put one of their plastic buffers in there. So you have a plastic buffer. As you can see, not aluminum, it's plastic. You can hear it. You have a steel Falado sear, which is great. And you have your hammer. Now the hammer is, how can I say, proprietary. Is the hammer steel? Yes, the pin is, but how about the rest? Yep, you have a steel hammer with a roller on the top. That's nice and lubed up. You've got a firing pin, which is, I can't get this in there, but it, yep, yep, there he goes. It's steel. And you like I say, we know the bolt stop is. It has to be. Now, if I can go in there, because the hammer is proprietary, you can't fit any mil spec internals in this you have to go kwa um so for realism that is a negative in that respect for durability well it's lasted five years so that's kind of cool the one thing i will tell you is it's firing of this gun that trigger so if i cock the hammer we're on semi-auto here right you have all that take up there so if i nice and warm tight it gets to there and that's the wall then it goes past. There's so much creep and take up on that that it does slow down the actual um, firing of this. So if you're trying to do a really snappy firing, the amount of creep on that, I would probably swap it out for an LM4 trigger, which has a little bit better. It's a cool design. The blade is quite nice. It does look kind of sexy in that. It's a really cool design. It's just, like I say, the way that this is set up, there's so much creep and then boom and there's like say five years of gunk on this that have been worn off but obviously it's worn in pretty well now the hammer itself it's not a massive thwack to the firing pin you know it doesn't hit the firing pin really hard it doesn't feel as stiff as like the vfc mil spec because they run on a real mil spec spring real mil spec hammer etc so it's going to be as close to it's basically just like the real steel in that respect but that's the other conundrum. Like I say, you've not only got the polymer buffer and spring, which is kind of cool having that weird conical design, but let's take out the bolt and carrier, shall we? And let's have a look at that. So if we, come on, oh, there she goes. Pull you out. Because it's standard T-handle, we don't need to take that out. Oh, look, let's give you a steel bolt carrier group. Again, it's it, my engineering head is like plastic with steel. Um, but I guess because this is steel and it is a heavy bolt carrier, um, the amount of gas it requires, hence the cooldown, 
to cycle this and blow it and knock it back is ridiculous. It's going to push it all the way back. And then, like I say, you're going to spend most of your gas doing that than shooting a BB downrange um, because it's going to really eat up a lot of gas out of that EPM mag. Um, that's where your efficiency has been, how would you say, annihilated, let's say. But, I mean, steel is great, as you can see, for five years. You don't get the, like you do with the zinc, the polishing here at the bottom as much because it's on that wheel. It doesn't need it. Um, so it has lasted a long time due to the the material it's made of. But, um, again, it is one of those that... It's a bit weird how people make decisions based off of what other people are asking. The For instance, you know, like when people say, I like steel and everything, they've gone, well, we'll give you a steel bolt carrier and not give me full steel fire controls and all the other bits that need to be done as well. But, hey, that's KWA. Now, let's see if we can get in. Inside, as you can see, you have your System 7 hot. I've got mine pretty much off. You don't really need much um, due to the fact that this gun it's fine, it's KWA, it shoots accurate. It's pretty decent as it is. It does use that KWA tool, so you will need that tool to adjust or manipulate this Jose gun in any way for the hop. So, yeah. Other than that, guys, it's kind of cool. So reassembly is quite easily, obviously. If you've done any, you've done them all. So if we flip this over upside down, because it'll hold out, open that way, put the bolt in, slide it all back. Oh, there you go. And it goes, click. And we can function test. And away we go. But yeah, I guess it's going to be a case of your opinion may vary. My opinion is it's a great gun. It's a good idea. I do like this rifle. Um, but comparing it to products in the modern day that are out on the market now, like VFC's, you know, New ARs, their Mark 18s, Gen 3s, the 416s, which are phenomenal. They're just, you know, it's night and day difference between the two and them in their approach to the same solutions. Like I say, VFC went the snappy bolt, uh, enhanced bolt carrier, oh, should I should say, with the enhanced um, buffer, should I say, with the tungsten weight in there to stop the bounce by giving you a lighter bolt carrier, giving you better efficiency. You can buy the steel bolt carriers and you can swap out the bu the buffer for a lighter buffer to balance it or different spring weights, etc., which is tunable, as they say. And that's awesome. And I believe KWA offer the same, but out the box they give you a full heavy bolt carrier group and a lighter spring and plastic buffer. But um, yeah, people say plastics are not durable, but five years in this gun, it's lasted and continues to shoot well, you know. It's kind of one of those, but um, yeah. So we, we're getting to the end now, guys. I'd love to know what you guys think to this awesome, you know, rifle. It is phenomenal. I'm, you know, just overwhelmed by what KW have done and seeing their approach to it you know um it's annoying that their inner barrels are proprietary it's annoying that their hop is a proprietary hop um that does annoy me and their internal fire controls are so you're limited to kwa spec let's say which are basically only kwa um and the odd guard bit and some bobs that are done for them um but yeah as long as you buy LM4, you should be able to fit into this rifle, no problem. The only downside is the handguard is not really changeable because of the unique design of the upper receiver, unless you exchange the upper receiver as well, which you could always do if you wish. Um, but at that point, I just buy a different rifle. But yeah, so this has been my look and review of the Mega Arms CQBR AR15 GBBR from KWA. If you've liked this video so far and you've got to this point, it's been a bit of a positive and negative to it, um, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more cool guns coming this way, and there's so many exciting things on the way that you, you really don't want to miss. So with that being said, I've been the Middle-Aged Gamer. You guys have been absolutely amazing, and I'll see you in the next one.